I just wish we had somebody good to shoot at, that's all. Hey, man, don't you know that's illegal? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is this? Your worst nightmare, butthorn. McBain! Yeah! Another movie nights and a better movie. Mm. But it's your worst nightmare, butthorn. Butthorn. <laughs> <laughs> your worst nightmare, butthorn. We looked at Gary Busey in Bulletproof. Um, <laughs> but it should have been Gary Busey in Butthorn. <laughs> butthorn, yeah. If you guys know anything about this movie, um, you've probably seen the clip online of him going, I'm your worst nightmare, butthorn. Um, but it turns out there's a whole movie around that. Yeah. yeah. So, Not to be confused with the 1996 Damon Wayne's Adam Sandler classic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a, truly the best movie. Truly the best movie called Bulletproof. Adam Sandler had to blow up Rob Schneider and Kevin James. That's exactly what it was. Which is weird, so did Gary Busey. So yeah, like no. that <laughs> It's pretty much a remake of the Gary Busey Bulletproof. <laughs> Adam Sandler going around, butthorn! <laughs> So Bulletproof is kind of two movies in one. Mm -hmm. um, the first 20 minutes or so is a uh, lethal weapon buddy cop type thing with like the one-liners and the curmudgeonly captain and things like that. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> that is the best part of the movie. If you want to watch Bulletproof, you probably should stop it at the 20 minute mark because that's yeah. the best part. Once he plays sax on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> But after that, it just switches genres. It becomes a POW rescue type movie against terrorists. Yeah, it's, it's a very weird movie. I mean, I think it's I think it's got some sort of relation to Fred Olin Ray because he's got a, he's got an associate producer and story credit. But it feels like they said to themselves, "Okay, we see that missing in action and Rambo are popular, but what if we mix that?" with crazy Martin Riggs from Lethal Weapon. <laughs> and of course there's that weird connection, of course, because Gary Busey was the bad guy in Lethal Weapon. He was Mr. Joshua. But he was far better in this. <laughs> as uh, Capitan Bulletproof. <laughs> you call him Capitan Bulletproof? This is the infamous Captain Bulletproof? Yeah. So who are you, butthorn? See how bulletproof he is by this VHS cover. He's about to get shot in the eye. Okay, <laughs> this is the biggest lie, is the title. Yeah. Because his nickname is Bulletproof. And they don't let you forget that. No. Yeah. say about nine billion times. It's constant in this thing. You see how thing. bulletproof he is. <laughs> but he's the opposite of Bulletproof. Yeah. He's constantly getting like, shot. He should be called Bullet Magnet, Bullet Phil. <laughs> Target practice. Target yeah. practice. And as far as like heroes with special abilities go, yeah. the ability to get shot several times is probably not the one you yeah. want. Not several times, as he confides later in the movie, he's been shot 39 yeah. times. And he gets shot like at least once after yeah, that, so too. 40. So it's at least 40 times by the end of the movie. Yeah. Bulletproof only works if it's an ironic nickname. <laughs> this is number uh, 39. He is called in to rescue his girlfriend, or a previous girlfriend, who's been kidnapped by terrorists, because she is part of the, this military unit who is transporting a tank that they want. What terrorists? All of the terrorists. <laughs> terrorists from every country. Because yeah, they have a million villains in this. We've got some evil Russians that just happen to be in there for no reason because this is the 80s. We've got <laughs> Mexicans because this is across the border. And for some reason, these Mexican bad guys are also Arabs. Yeah, yeah, apparently that's popular down there. Yeah, sort of like a, a ambiguous ethnicity yeah. Arab uh, yeah. Muslim ones as well, which are fighting with the other ones. Yeah. Remember when all the terrorists just combine? <laughs> and they're just going after the one tank. Are they gonna share it? Like they're what going is the after the there? one guy, Gary Busey. <laughs> oh, um, we, we mustn't forget the name of this tank. The MBT-90, codenamed Thunderblast. Thunderblast. <laughs> Thunderblast. Thunderblast. It's, it's so Stop hard. trying to be serious when you say Thunderblast. It's hard to take it seriously when you just keep thinking of farts uh. every time they mention this tank. Thunderblast yeah. butthorn. Yeah. Uh. Holy shit. If the rest of the movie had been like 
the first 20 minutes, yeah. though, when it's him and his clearly um, trying to be lethal weapon partner. Yeah, we got, we got, we got would-be Murtar there. I'm too old for this shit, etc. You know, he's just slurping down Pepto this more just a, yeah. yeah. And he's never seen after that part of the movie. He, that part yeah. ends, act one is done, and nothing else relates to anything we else. We have to break down the amazing opening sequence to Bullet because <laughs> it is amazing, this opening sequence. They're, they're on a stakeout uh, to where they think this arms deal is going to be. Uh, and uh, a very young Danny Trejo pops up in this movie, not looking quite as yeah. craggy as he does these days, but yeah, still looking super virtually Super flat Danny Trejo, which yeah. is a bit of a rarity. And Beauty has to work out that they're, that they're not selling creamsicles. Because we gotta make sure they're not selling creamsicles in there, that's why. Oh, come on, Mac. When's the last time you saw a guy take a limo to a deserted warehouse for a creamsicle? What the fuck happened this time, McVeigh? Well, as you can see, the suspects aroused my suspicions. Doing what? Well, number one, they were trading home defense units. Number two, they were selling ice cream with artificial ingredients. Number three... It's three o'clock in the goddamn morning. So he sneaks into the building, and he's completely conspicuous getting on this, getting on this railing, and his... He turns into spider view, see, like, yeah. on the ceiling. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web, aims at any size, catches seeds, just like guys, look out, here comes a Spider-Man. His plan is essentially, I'm going to walk out onto this rig, <laughs> wait for to get spoiled by Danny Trail, going, what the fuck is that? Yeah. The worst nightmare, Budhorn! And just wait for about 15 guys armed with machine guns and rocket launchers to just shoot at me. <laughs> Jesus. That is pretty much the one thing that connects with the POW stuff later, because that's his plan through the whole war. It's just to <laughs> casually walk along and they'll all have guns and be like, oh, what's that guy doing over there? Butt horns! <laughs> ah! There's a brilliant moment where he, where he gets the tank back later and he literally just strolls out from the tree line. <laughs> He's not dressed in fatigues or anything. He's been recruited no. to go in and save them as just a one-man army. Yeah. And in casual clothes. <laughs> yeah. It's to the point where the military sent this his ex-girlfriend onto this team because they knew if something went wrong, they would send in Capitan Bulletproof. I mean, we could save them. We could send in, you know, another 12 people like we did the first time. No, nope, we're getting Gary Busey because he managed to wheeze his way out of a court martial for accidentally shooting his friend. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we know one thing about him. He is bulletproof, but he is not love-proof. <laughs> you may be bulletproof, but you're not love-proof. <laughs> That's that entire scene, one line. <laughs> we should mention the uh, the random woman that just happens to have broken into Gary Busey's house when he gets back after the opening sequence. Oh, she I made just... a wax imprint of his key. Yeah. Like, uh... <laughs> She's, She's just waiting to be the nudity in the film. Yeah, she yeah. is literally waiting to be the nudity because she walks in and there's about a dozen candles there. <laughs> <laughs> She's been waiting in this bath for goodness knows how long. So like apparently, my plan was to seduce you and burn the house down. <laughs> but my question is, did he own all of these candles, or did she just have a sack full of candles that she yeah. takes with her? She, she just went on a massive Yankee candle spree. <laughs> that, that shit's expensive. This is really expensive for not a sure thing. She was really lucky that he was okay with this. Well, it's because he's not love proof. <laughs> I love that she says that, you know, you may be bulletproof, but you're not love-proof flying while he's got a gaping wound from the stakeout thing, like, right there. It's like, oh, look how bulletproof he is. Uh. He collects all of the bullets in his yeah. yeah. wow. <laughs> I love how in, at the end of the opening sequence, they're all getting checked out by the uh, the EMTs, and he, and, he get, and he goes, Hey, are you fine? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> sure, I'll accept that. You've clearly got a massive bullet wound in your shoulder from when you got <laughs> shot, but no. I'll just let you go home and extract yourself with a pair of pliers, like, <laughs> His nerves must be fucked. <laughs> are you okay, Mike? I'm fine. I just gotta get rid of these creeps. 
Are you still there? It's also fine that he just shoots his door up when people come to talk to him. Just <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's classic McBain for you. <laughs> He's not getting back his security deposit on the <laughs> <laughs> The first 20 minutes of this movie is basically like a Rayo Wolfcast and McBain movie. Yeah. <laughs> and then unfortunately after that, it takes a severe turn into the Christopher Walken McBain movie. <laughs> so depressing to the point that there is a jarring rape scene in the yeah. middle of the movie. Okay, here's a litmus test for you filmmakers. If you can edit out your entire rape scene and it has no bearing on the plot whatsoever and you can't tell it's gone, edit it out, goodness sake! There's no, no reason for it. it. No. Yeah, it's, it's severely uncomfortable, especially when um, she's freed later. And she starts trying to beat up Gary Busey, and he's yeah. like forcibly holding her there. And it's like, yeah. I know what you're going for, but this is not comfortable. She's upset, you know, the scene after it happens, but then after that, no, she's fine. You would never know. Yeah, yeah you would never know. It's just, it's like, why is this in here? Why? Yeah, no reason. How the hell do we stop this thing? Well, you're supposed to be a mechanical genius. You figure it out. They're in Thunderblast. <laughs> Spoilers, they get in the tank and they get free. And uh, and they're in the tank and she's taking her hair down for whatever reason. It's it's all crimped. Yeah. And his hair is perfectly combed, despite <laughs> the hilarious scene where he's on a giant spool. He manages yeah. to get captured at one point because, I don't know, sending one guy to do this might have been a really stupid idea. Because yeah. constantly strong in and saying, hey, butt horns didn't yeah. work for once. He gets, he, gets two, he gets two Mexican guys to help him out. One of them manages to get lost almost instantly. Yeah. <laughs> the other one gets killed off shortly after anyway. They might they're have not love proof. proof. Yeah, <laughs> they're not love proof. <laughs> All right. So he manages to get captured, and for some reason they think the best way to test out how bulletproof he is is to tie him to this giant wheel that they just happen to have lying around outside this <laughs> church that is their base of operations. <laughs> you know, because... And I don't know what their plan was at this point, were they just going to try and shoot at him? It's never really made clearer than, we need to get Gary Beauty onto this giant wheel because we're going to we're gonna do the sequence where she gets a grenade in full view of all, this, all the terrorists as well, just yeah. chuck it behind it, and apparently that will cause the wheel to turn down the hill as opposed to just flop on its front and crush yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> he turns into a hilarious dummy as yeah. he's rolling down the hill. <laughs> That was probably the best action piece after it went into the terrorist plot. Yeah. Oh, oh, you weren't excited by the big finale? Yeah. The Thunder <sighs> Butthorn tank just keeps blowing stuff up and they're watching down their Atari computers in there. They're like, oh, oh, but they also had coffee. <laughs> oh. I love the smell of Java in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Man, once they get to that ending, I mean, it's clear they had a huge explosives budget, but it just keeps going, and it's the same sort of thing over and over again to the point where your eyes glaze over because it's there's no real great payoff, and they they have like three different main bad guys, yeah. and you forget about each one until they show up, and you're like, oh yeah, I guess especially the him. Russian one because he was only introduced in a flashback yeah. earlier on, and they have to show it again, so he's like. Remember me? And then Gary Buse is like... Sits there for like 30 solid seconds. <laughs> Who, uh, how could I ever forget you? <laughs> <laughs> Shang Tsung pops up in that, oh, in yeah, that flashback that as well for no apparent reason, just never seen again. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Shang Tsung. He could have been the fourth boss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it feels like... <sighs> There was something else planned for this movie that didn't quite happen. I'm not sure what order it was, whether they filmed the cop portion or the terrorist portion, but it feels like they were filmed separately. Like maybe maybe they started with this cop thing and then they decided on something else and they couldn't get Matt Carey to Gala or something, or maybe they had um, the, the terrorist portion, it was running short, so they're like, let's just add this kind of like backstory where he's a cop at mm -hmm. the beginning of this. And, and Which here's... saved the movie if that's how it went. <laughs> yeah. It totally saved the movie because all of the best parts are in that. And 
I feel like if if that was the whole movie, it would have been a classic. Yeah. This is this is one of the most front loaded movies I've ever seen. McBain. Yes. Just between you and me, I like your style. All the really good stuff, like the the act, the only action sequence where they're chasing down Danny Trejo in a in a in an ice cream truck, I think it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, where he pulls out the minigun too. Yeah, and the, and the grenades. And yeah, that that sequence is genuinely really well done in a way that the rest of the action scenes in the rest of the film aren't. <laughs> yeah, well, it's so. There's so much humor in it, but it still feels like there's some suspense and some things at stake, and mm -hmm. it feels like his persona suited that type of, of genre really well, yeah. mm -hmm. versus the other one where it, it just feels like it's sort of a depressing movie he kind of wandered yeah. into. It's sort of like a third-rate Commando or Rambo movie. It's not really what you kind of want to see after the opening sequence, you kind of go, oh man, this is going to be a fun cop movie, and then they, they pull the Bane switch on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of his one-liners kind of disappear in the war part. Because he's full of them at the beginning, but then when he's in the tank, he's just kind of like generic stuff like, Good job! Like it's an yeah. FMV game when you're in the tank. So he just pops up in the corner to say generic things. Oh, watch where you're shooting, Butthorn! Bird season's over, Butthorn. This movie needed more butthorns. Yeah. It needed more butthorns, but it, what butthorns it had <laughs> were truly great. Like, I love that that really is the only thing that's special about him, is sheer dumb luck. Mm -hmm. yeah. there's, there's no sort of skill, it's just he happens to not die. Well, he does have sax on the beach skill. He does have sax on the beach <laughs> I love he's sleeping with the sax, too, before he remembers. Yeah. And playing sax on the beach. How could I ever forget you? <laughs> <laughs> this one true love. <laughs> I'd love to know how often he sleeps with his sex. <laughs> Every night. <laughs> Just playing that while they're on the job, his partner. Oh, yeah. I'm too old for this shit. Oh, and when they're recruiting him for the war part of the movie, there's <laughs> an ashtray on the table. <laughs> Best crotch shot ever. Pew! Pff, ah! uh, that was funnier than any of the nut shots in Who's Your Caddy. Definitely. And the whole movie was funnier than Who's Your Caddy, honestly. Oh yeah, way better if you're going to choose between Bulletproof and Who's Your Caddy. <laughs> Which is a no a common choice. Oh, uh, I'm being held at gunpoint after she was pretty much a caddy bullet. <laughs> As long as you're not Gary Hughes, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, uh, I would highly recommend this movie. Uh, if you like action movies, I mean, even though it's really slow, um, especially toward the middle, there's some lulls, um, it's definitely worth watching. Even if you're just gonna see the first 20 minutes, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I recommend the first 20 minutes. I think you can easily check out the rest of the movie unless yeah. you were really desperate. I mean, there, there's a couple of scraps of, you know, so bad it's good humor in the lace portion of the movie, but uh, it's it's sad that it doesn't keep up the momentum of the first portion of the movie because, you know, that that is the truly brilliant portion of the movie, and then it's just all over from that point. Really. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a little bit of work to yeah. get through. There is a lot of dry patches in the same field. I get the impression that that, that they basically shot this on a on a sort of fairly low budget, and they just you know, oh, we have a field. That's half our movie. Yeah. <laughs> they, they had a tank and a field, and that's what they worked with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you're watching in a group, I wouldn't watch the whole thing. You can have fun with some of the rest of it, maybe. It's if very you're in a fast group forward watching roll, is the yeah. Thing. yeah. You won't miss much. Yeah, there. but the beginning is awesome. All right, so check it out, Butthorns.
the fuck is this? Your worst nightmare, butthorn! McBain! Yeah! 